Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess, and today we're gonna to go over integrating Power Apps with our Word templates. So last week, we actually did one through five here. Today, we're just gonna focus on number six here, integrating with Power Apps. So we're gonna integrate Power Apps to our templates in Microsoft Word with SharePoint. If you missed last week's video, feel free to check out the properties. Last week's video will be right there. So let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so we have two content types. Uh, both of the content types have templates attached to them. We did all that last week. So we can come in here and we can go to the properties of the content type or the document and we can make a change. So we can say edit and we can change this to template project two, hit save. When we open the document, we open the document up, we can see that it now says template project two. And so the other way around too, we can change here, change it to template project three, hit save, it should auto save, close it back down. And when we refresh SharePoint, it's gonna say template project three. Okay, so now, we want to integrate Power Apps. But to go on to one more question, someone was asking me, how do you change the title? Now, when we first open up the document, we can add in our username. Let's say we had someone like Michael Jordan. The project name will be basketball. The date is somewhere now, so we'll just say 2 slash 22 slash 2024. And the manager name is you know, Michael Jordan. Also, so we want to change the document name, right? My suggestion is not to try and add it into the design of the template in a quick parts. I could not find the quick parts for the title in there, but all you want to do is come up here to the middle section and you want to just give it a name. So certificate Michael Jordan. For now, this is a great way to just do it and make sure it saves into that SharePoint library. I think this is just a training issue for now, but maybe we could use Power Automate later to rename our title. And so we hit, when we hit save, and then we close down our document, and we refresh SharePoint, we can see that we now have certificate Michael Jordan, and that's how we name it. All right, so we have some documents in here. What I wanna do is I wanna integrate Power Apps. So if I come in here to more properties, I wanna change this form here. Now there's a couple ways to do it. Once you open up the properties, you can come up to the three dots and the tilde, and you can say customize with Power Apps. That's one way. Or we can unhighlight our selection and then click on the three dots here and do integrate Power Apps customize forms. So this is gonna open up Power Apps for us. This is where we love to be, Power Platform, Power Apps. Let's do some work here. Now, before we go into Power Apps, let me just show you what happens if you mess up and you broke your Power Apps just to give you no worries that if you make a power app and it doesn't work, you can always go back to default. So we'd come up here to the gear icon, library settings, more library settings. Right here is form settings. So if you see that form settings, and then it should say, hey, right now we're using a custom form. That's because I created one already. You can always say use default SharePoint form and delete your old custom form and then start all over. So if you mess up or you're worried that you may replace the default SharePoint form, don't worry, you can just delete the form and start all over. Now, lucky for us, Microsoft has made changes and this is now looking like the modern version of Power Apps. But let's just make this super simple, as simple as we can. We have our form. The first thing we wanna do is what? We want to add our content type. So when we click Edit Fields, Add Field, Content Type. We want to be able to see our content type. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it to the top. Right, so content type. And now you see we have this big, long uh, GUI ID. So it's just an ID that it describes what the content type is. Now, if you really wanted to know where that came from, check this out, I'll show you. So when we're in library settings, and then in the settings of our content types, you can see we have certificate and memo. So if we click on memo, you can see right here, content type, and then we have 0, X, 0, 1, 1, 0, E, C, D. That's our ID of our content type. So you can see this one has 1, 0, 0, E, C, D. Let's check out the other one. So we're in memo. Now let's go to certificate. 
you can see that the content type ID actually changes. So that's where that number is coming from. It's the embedded ID of our content types. So let's go back to Power Apps. So that same content ID number is right here. So that's that 0x01. That's that same ID that we saw in the document properties, the document library settings in SharePoint. But now let's say we don't want to see that ID. What's great about modern Power Apps is we can click on this and this is a combo box actually. You can see right here that it's a combo box. We can come to edit fields and change from primary text to ID to the name. So then when we close that down and we press play, now we have certificate and memo. Now what I want to do is when I change the content type, I want to change my fields, right? Depending on my content type, certain fields are available, right? So the content type of memo, the template of memo, uses different fields. And it does not have project name. So if we come in here and we go to properties, you can see that it's not reflecting those changes. So we're not actually done here. So what I want to do is I want to create a variable that lets me see different fields based on when I select content types. So I'm going to click on my form and click on fields, add fields, and I'm going to add all the fields of both content types. So we have in here, let's see, manager comments. What else were we missing? Let me take a look. We're missing manager comments, message, and company name. Manager comments, message, and company name. Okay, so now we have all of that filled in. We have all the fields there. Now I want to create a variable depending on what content type I selected. Now let's say you had 100 content types. Yes, it's gonna take you a long time to do this, but that's what you get for having 100 templates. Okay, so let's take this one bit at a time. So when I change the content type, I'm gonna come over here to the top left, and I'm gonna do on change. On change, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna create a context variable. I'm not gonna create a global variable. You can decide that if you like global better than context, it's not a big deal. But I'm just gonna say update context, and I'm gonna create a variable here. I'm gonna call it variable content type. Maybe we'll call it variable content type name. And what I'm gonna change it to is going to be the data card value six, data card value six dot, and I've selected dot name. Not ID, right? We don't want the ID. You could do ID if you wanted to. I'm just gonna do name. In order to help me visualize that, and this is this is for development. This is not something that you should probably you know keep it in your power app, but I'm gonna add a, a text label in here. I'm gonna unlock and add, and this text label is just gonna be my variable. So variable content type name. So I just wanna make sure that when I select it, that that content type, that variable actually changes. So now, now we can build in when we wanna view things. Let's take a look at certificate. On the certificate template, we do not have company name, message, or manager comments. So in Power Apps, on manager comments, I'm gonna to go to the visibility property. I'm gonna say if, variable content type equals certificate then for certificate we do not see company name manager name so it's going to be false we don't see it if it's equal to certificate we do not see it else it's true i'm going to do the same thing on message my message card paste it in same thing on company name paste it in. Okay, so now if we're in certificate, so now we need to do the same thing on memo. So on memo, project name is not visible. So project name, well, I'll just paste that in. We're gonna change this to memo. It's not visible. Okay, so now when we're on visible uh, memo and certificate, you can see that our fields change. Now title, I'm actually going to take that out. I don't need title. I don't want to see it. Uh, the name property is actually more important in our field. So actually we could add in here. So let's see. 
we could go to fields, add field, we could actually add name. That's more important than title. So you can see that our name here is memo. Certificate, okay, let's publish. Now that we created that variable between our two forms, let's publish. And now we need to wait once again 30 seconds to one minute. I'll fast forward for you so you don't have to wait in the video for me. Okay, so here's where the real success is. Now if we go to properties, more properties, we can see that in certificate, we see the variable here, certificate. We see manager name, we do not see the other properties. Now if we come to memo, we do not see the project name, we see the other fields that we want. So now, between our two content types, we have different properties that we can edit in the form. So now, let's say congrats, you did it, let's change that to the memo was changed. We can hit save, we open up our memo, we can now see the memo was changed in our document right there. Perfect, exactly what we want. Now we've used Power Apps to do two different content types. And based on which content type we have selected are the fields that we see and that we can edit. So we can change this to template project number five, hit save. We can see the project name is visible here. And it has changed to template project five. There's one more thing we can do. We can actually change which fields are visible based on the view. I'm gonna go up here to the gear icon properties, library settings, more library settings. When you create new views, there's something big you don't wanna do. And we're gonna create a couple of views. Now never delete or change all documents. You can do it, but I don't recommend it. Just, just leave it alone. Say create view right here. We're gonna base our next view based off all documents. And all documents, we're going to do a filter, show only when content type is equal to memo. All right, and we're gonna name this one memo, memos. And in the memos, we only had a few fields available. We don't wanna show all the fields, right? We did not show project name. I'm gonna click OK. So that's our memos. So now we have a new view. We have all documents, we can see everything, or we can click on memos, and we only see the fields that are filled out. I'm gonna do the same thing, library settings, more library settings, create view, and this is gonna be our certificates. We're gonna base it off all documents. Well, we could base it off memos. That wouldn't be bad, but I'm gonna do all documents. Certificates. And we're gonna do a filter on the content type, certificates. We gotta make sure that we you know, pay attention to our exact names. So it's actually certificates, certificate. So the content type is equal to certificate. And this one does not show, I believe, message manager and message or manager name. And we're gonna click okay. Okay, so now we have all documents, we have certificates, we only see our certificates, and we also have memos. So now we've split that up with different views in SharePoint. Okay, so now we've integrated Power Apps. You can do way more. I just wanted to show you how you could use those content types. Maybe you wanna change the content type to view only, read only. Another way you could view that content type is by selecting one and then clicking the I the I button right here, this information, this is gonna bring up your Power App also. So right here is your Power App. And then, so if we went back to the other one, if we went back to a memo and we did the I icon, we can see that we do have our Power App here. We can see that it then shows the fields and that you wanna see for your content type. As I was saying, maybe you wanna turn this to read only. You don't want people to change the content type so in the end, maybe all you want to do is actually, we could come up here and do visible, change this to false. The name, we'll keep the name in there, but now we hid that first card, republish. We have the name of our document, username, and the fields below. So I'm back to my PowerPoint again, integrate with Power Apps. 
We have done that. We have now integrated with Power Apps. Maybe we'll write in a new one here. Uh, I'm gonna uncross it. Let's try to do another way, but using PDFs. And the big thing about this is no premium. No premium, we're not doing premium today. I'm sorry, Microsoft, I love you, but I'm teaching people how to not do this without premium. So next week, we're gonna do it another way. We're gonna do PDFs, Power Automate, Power Apps, no premium licenses. If you wanna see this, please like and subscribe. My name is Andrew Hess. I'll see you next week.